Jesus emerged out of nothingness like a bright idea. And so has each one of us. Born into this world unique and gifted. A masterpiece cast like never before and never after. A magnificent work of art. And each one of us an artist too. Eager to paint the canvas of life. Remember as a child, you woke up each morning full of wonderful ideas and dreams. Dreams where everything was possible. You wanted to change the world and you believed that you could. Believed in superheroes and believed you could be one. And then it all slowly slipped away. But that does not mean that superheroes do not exist. These heroes stepped out of nothingness into greatness. They were ordinary folks who wanted to make a difference, who believed in their dreams. They were just like you and me, except where everyone else saw the rubble, they saw a palace standing. And when everyone else was enveloped with the darkness of self-doubt, they saw light within. I am Simarjeet Singh, and I believe that the same light flickers in you and in me. I also believe that you have everything you need to reach the pinnacle of your success. And I'm here to tell you that the only person standing between you and your success, between you and your dreams, is you. And it can all change in the moment the voice inside you says, Yes, I can. Yes, I can live with passion and purpose. Yes, I can lead. Yes, I can make a difference. I am the artist and the world is my canvas. I am the superhero I once believed in as a child. And that defining moment is now. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to another episode of the Beginner's Mind series, wherein we listen to the experts, accomplished people in their fields. All the, We've had guests who spoke on leadership, innovation, personal branding. And um, as I told you earlier in one of the series, I haven't been reading a lot of books, but I've been listening to a lot of amazing people who come from different cultures, different backgrounds, but have one thing in common, the passion to develop others and that started with their own inner transformation and we try to decode their journey so that we can share with all of you how you can embark on your own journey of um, self-transformation and achieving your highest potential please join me in welcoming the gorgeous and accomplished uh, guest today her name is sonia dube Devan. you're welcome to the show sonia Thank you Thank so you. much for taking out the time. It's a pleasure to have you. I really appreciate you taking out the time and showing your interest in this. Um, I'll briefly read out your intro, Sonia. Uh, Sonia is the founder and managing partner of the Indian School of Image Management. She's an entrepreneur, an image consultant, international keynote speaker, published author, and first internationally certified image professional in the AICI India chapter. She's been dubbed as the fairy godmother of personal transformation. I'm going to pick your brains on that, how we can all, you know, we all need your spell, <laughs> fairy godmother. <laughs> how we can um, transform ourselves. She has over 13 experience, ladies and gentlemen, 13 experience, rich experience in personal branding, image management, executive coaching and training, market research and consumer behavior. India's top corporations uh, reach out to her for consulting and workshops and she's worked closely with many C-suite executives um, and has launched and been instrumental in the revamp of few of India's top personal brands. Sonia, once again, welcome. I look forward to an exciting uh, discussion here today. Um, I, I hope, um, you know, you also please feel free to ask me questions whenever you feel like. This is a conversation both ways. But I would like to start with um, one of your favorite quotations out there, which is out there on LinkedIn as well. You write, you are your most valuable asset. You are your most valuable asset. Start investing in it today. Now, it's very profound as we look at it. And I sincerely believe it. I've practiced it. But times are tough and challenging. People have lost their jobs. Youngsters who had offered letters are no longer hearing from the companies. 
um, the number of unemployed folks has gone up. Now, I believe, is a, a very important time and a lot of uncertainty uh, in the economic scenario as far as that goes. Uh, talk to us about investing in yourself and why that is so important. Thank you, Simarjeet, first of all, for having me on your show. And yes, giving everyone an opportunity to talk to leaders and you know share their experience and learn along with that. So a great job that you're doing for everyone out there. Um, a very important question that you asked me and actually started with the right, the crux of what I do and why I do that. So yes, as I said, invest in yourself because you are your most valuable asset. Let's think about it. Everything about us, about our lives, if we have to look, think about it, education, career, our personal relationship, everything exists around us because of us. We exist, this shell, this physical existence of us, right? So everything comes down to right to you. That is why sometimes we get so involved into looking into the external things, taking care of things which are beyond you, beyond your, um, you know, the core that is actually you and overlooking yourself. So sometimes you have to go back, think about it, that everything in my life exists because I exist. And am I looking towards myself, right? So yes, I take care of a small part, which is your personal branding and image management. But when I talk about myself, when I talk about you as an asset, it's about you taking care and, you know, worshiping your body as a temple. It's about you taking care of your mind. It's about you taking care of your values, your skills and everything, hard and soft skills and combining that package together and making sure that you present it in the best possible way in the world. That's that deep. Is I, I, I love the I love the analogy of worshiping, worshiping your body as your temple. And, um, you know, that is so um, uh, true, especially in today's times, because um, we often take the body for granted, the body and the mind for granted. You know, um, sometimes we do look after the body, but then we ignore mm -hmm. the mind, you know, and mm -hmm. it's the it's the complete package. You see all these diets going around, organic foods and so right. much, uh, so many other things. But when it comes to choosing our thoughts, um, yes. you know, we let all the toxic nonsense that should be rejected right in the first place, we let it in. And I so love that analogy of uh, treating your, worshipping your body as your temple. That's beautiful. Yes, please. Yes. So actually what happens and this is something that you uh, talked about was really important we talk about body and mind and in our mind these two things are separate but where do they exist the body and the mind are one package it's all together it's in this shell that we are talking about it's connected you can't just look at one and then let go of the other it's all uh, one thing you can't just talk uh, take care of your diet and just completely ignore your thoughts you can't just take care of your thoughts but completely ignore your skills your education it's all one thing and that's why it comes down to the same thing that i talked about that you know you are the most valuable asset everything that you do for yourself always is going to give you return on investment and that is very crucial in today's time because yes Right now, it's the pandemic. Nobody planned for it. Nobody had it in their 2020 goals that there will be a pandemic and I have to be prepared. Nobody thought about it ever. But when you and things actually went haywire for a lot of companies, for a lot of individuals, for um, solopreneurs. But when you have something, when you have invested in yourself, when you have your skills sorted, when you know what you're capable of, even if times are tough, you can pull through you can still go through the times and actually come out of it uh victorious on the other side so yes that's that's mm. what i mean by the statement oh, I, I love that and you and you're radiating that positive um, vibrations that uh, self-assurance that self-confidence and that inner balance tell us um does sonia dubey divan does she does she have any daily rituals to Put yourself in the right frame of mind. Um, what are your self-care rituals or what are your go-to techniques, you know, that you would want to share with the viewers as well that help you pick yourself up on a day that's very, very difficult? Absolutely. That's, um, I would love to share this. So every day, irrespective of, sometimes, yes, I have to compromise, but finding that me time, you must have heard this over and over again that mm -hmm. people just keep saying and, all the leaders in the world, every other person in the world would say, 
find that me time. It could be just five minutes. It could be just 10, half an hour. Totally depends upon you. So mm -hmm. every day in the morning, I would have my cup of tea and, you know, just do some breathing and pranayam. That is really important. Mm -hmm. uh, even if I don't get time for workouts, at least pranayam is something that I do on a daily basis, breathing sure. techniques, breathing exercises. And the first thing, the moment I put my feet down from the bed, the mm -hmm. first thing that I do is I actually um, pay my gratitude for giving me another day mm. and really show my gratitude to my family, to even, you know, the nature, the environment, to be able to get from the out from the comfort of your bed and start from that comfort. It's, it's amazing. So it's many people don't to start. It. Yeah, It's a great place to start. So mm -hmm. be grateful about where you are at that moment. Maybe yesterday you were in a better place, but still today you are still in a better place. Be grateful about it. Be grateful about the day that you have been given because you mm -hmm. can turn it around in that 24 hours also. Absolutely. So, you can do, do so much with that. Yeah, I, th I completely agree with the power of gratitude there. You know, um, this I, I read this rhyme somewhere, Sonia, uh, written in Urdu and Hindi. He said, Ek savera hua karta tha jab has ke utha karte te hum. एक सवेरा हुआ करता था जब हंस के उठा करते थे हम और आज कई बार बिना मुस्कुराए ही शाम हो जाती है क्यों हंसती खेलती जिंदगी आम हो जाती है क्यों वक्त के साथ चेहरे की मुस्कान चली जाती है and I think uh, you've said it beautifully that simple ritual I first came across it when I watched the movie The Secret back in 2006 I remember and I started practicing it and uh, as simple as um, you know if you open the tap and running water is there say a silent thank you um, and uh, so many other things my wife used to practice she still does it um, this uh, thanks Thursday for thanks you know so that it's all so just little reminders there about all the gifts that you have in your life which we often take for granted so it's pranayam it's breathing exercises it's starting your day with gratitude and please continue yes and um, sitting with your to-do list on that day what do you plan to accomplish what do you plan to do on that particular day mm -hmm. don't wait for you to go to office because your to-do list is not just your work your mm -hmm. to-do list is beyond your work also because work will be I have to complete these tasks but what about investing finding that time to learn something new to mm -hmm. watch your podcast to mm -hmm. um, read a new book to have a new hobby or maybe you know pick up your phone and talk to that friend that you have not connected with her since a very long time so make your task list for the day that i need to dedicate my time in doing all these things which is for myself work which everyone does and other than that finding out that time for your loved ones for yourself so creating that task list to-do list and going by that abiding by that following it like a religion that's the most important thing that i do on a daily basis yeah and it's it's how you start your day it's how you start your day um, i had a we i read a poem recently which was by the famous poet uh, Ed, edgar albert guest about have you earned your tomorrow and uh, happy to share with you it went viral across the world and i believe one of the reasons that people loved it so much was the fact that it resonated with them that uh, take every single day is a microcosm of your life you know that's that's sort of the main message behind that video and i completely agree how you spend your life can be determined by how you're spending your days so if you're very meticulous very well prepared if you are not um, wasting that opportunity that god has given you today to perhaps write a different chapter you know so see what's gone in the past is gone but today when you wake up in the morning you have that power to um, take charge and Sonia you'll find it interesting it's so many wonderful people I've spoken to in the last couple of weeks and this common thread comes up in almost all the conversations every single one of them has paid a lot of attention to this fact has focused a lot on how to start your day well because and I think this is something we often overlook by going to default activities and default being mindlessly picking up your phone and looking at all the um, notifications on it so yeah. <laughs> without taking charge if Sonia you wouldn't be doing the pranayama or the gratitude or the other exercises that you're doing um, and you just read your notifications you've given up that opportunity to shape your own opinion for the day you know how I'm going to be today 
right? Absolutely. And a lot of people give that power up. So yeah. thank you for that. Thank you for that reminder. These little reminders, they go a long way. I appreciate that. Um, talk to us about your journey, Sonia, into what you're currently doing. Um, this is brand new in India, image consulting, personal branding. And I know it's a growing field. And um, um, did, tell us about your pre image consulting uh, before you launched the uh, uh, Indian School of Image Management, before you ventured on to this business, what were you doing before? What prompted your shift into this? And right. what are the challenges? And how so many of our viewers, Sonia, who are sitting on the fence, there's so many fantastic ideas out there, people who want to write a book, who want to turn solopreneurs, freelancers, entrepreneurs, but they sort of that doubt in between, perhaps I'll make it, perhaps I won't. I want to listen from, from to your journey, please, on how did you go about this? What prompted it? What sort of triggered it? And what were the challenges along the way? Great. So you are uh, you have opened up a pandora's box because there's <laughs> so much to share mm -hmm. all right so i'll start uh, way back from 2008 actually uh, although i can go beyond that also but for now for this question let's start from 2008 so that's when i was uh, pursuing my mba and um, yeah the global recession happened and there was no jobs in the market so placement situation was also very um, bleak I means people were not getting uh, you know placements and com jobs in the company so that was the year that i got placed and i was i'm really grateful that i was one of the few people in my institute who actually got placed and um, it landed me into a job which was something that i never planned market research okay so you look at me right now <laughs> <laughs> i was doing um i joined a company in market research and all i would do is just uh, look at numbers analyze data you know do research and um, um, actual ground level research sitting sitting in front of a screen perhaps most of the time most of the time although i used to get some time to go to the field but that was very mm -hmm. minimum mostly it used to be hours and hours of staring at an excel sheet you mm -hmm. won't believe Sivajit, for the first four months i could just see excel sheets in my in my dreams <laughs> <laughs> happens happens <laughs> yeah <laughs> right <laughs> I, I remember sony I, I was hired um, um i i spent some time about eight to nine months in the grand hyatt hotel in dubai running the room service for that property and we had uh, 10 different phone lines and Hyatt had a standard. We got to pick up every phone call within the first three rings. And uh, when the during the weekend in the morning, they'll be like, so we had a lot of rooms. I don't know, 800 plus rooms and suites and everybody would want room service breakfast. So we had <laughs> phone calls coming in and I these two sounds especially got embedded in my head. One was the phone ringing and we got to answer it. And the second was the printer where the kitchen orders would start printing. So I would wake up at 4 a.m. in the morning. Oh my God, okay, I can hear the printer. I can hear the phone ringing. So I completely relate to that. Yeah, you're dreaming of Excel sheets, right? Yes, means, and how, you know, you get so programmed to those little things which happen on a continuous basis. And I'm going to, um, you know, just remind me later on about this thing that how you program yourself, because this will um, come back to the investing yourself um, bit also. So coming back to the Excel sheet nightmare, and it's not that I was not enjoying it. It was all right, but um, my colleagues were amazing. In fact, um, some of them are still friends, a uh, great company to work with, amazing atmosphere. Um, you're getting paid means that feeling of you know getting getting that sms with on 31st of every month your account is credited it's a loop you know it's uh, such it a is. amazing comfort. biggest addiction on planet earth a fixed salary at the end of the month <laughs> the end of the month hmm. so i would i'm totally grateful about it but there was this um you know little feeling that gut feeling in me which always told me that this is not where I belong. This is not something that um, I am going to do for the rest of my life. Um, it's. It was just, you know, there was this back of the mind, this thought continuously that you are, Sonia, you have to do something beyond this uh, than this. You are meant for something else. What else that was, I had no clue. And actually, I had zero clue. Every day, what I would do, I would go on Google, find a new job, a new profession, which is doable. So not just and, a new job, uh, but a new profession. Huh? So, okay. <laughs> okay. That's interesting. Profession altogether means uh, fashion designing, events, marketing, branding, digital marketing. I would have explored everything. Mm -hmm. And I would sit down with my journal and make pros and cons, pros and cons of should I you know, venture out in this particular field or not? 
then I gave up. That was a very silly exercise. <laughs> I gave up on that. But what I did was I started looking internally that what are my strengths and weaknesses? And uh, what are what is the thing that I am really good at? So I started talking to my friends and started having a candid conversation. Initially, everyone was like, oh, you're great. You're great. It was like a very, you know, uh, general feedback. But then I started, you know, uh, digging a little deeper. And what I got was people started telling me that, Sonia, one thing that we know is that every time we come to you and we say, hey, I went to that place and it didn't work out and I didn't get the right reaction or something. And you would exactly tell me where this say this, notice this. And if you notice this kind of a reaction, say this thing, uh, enter the room like this at this point of time, call at this point of time, right. uh, change your hair to this, change your body language to this, posture oh, wow. to this. I would just give that on the spot. Uh, Interesting. You know, and this is without any formal training? Without any formal training. This okay. was just, I would just tell one, two, three, four, five steps and they would come back and they would say, Sonia, that worked. That really worked. So. That's when I started thinking that what is the profession that can utilize this particular mm -hmm, skill, mm -hmm. right? The fairy godmother was at work long before <laughs> of personal transformation, right? Yes, but you know, at that point of time, nobody was talking about image consulting in India. There was coaching. I landed on coaching. But uh, when I explored profile of coaches, I was so overwhelmed. Everyone's profile was 20 years experience, 15 years of coffee. All men, all really old. <laughs> you got it. Right. Well, I'm talking yeah, about 10 yeah. years, 10 years ago, right? Yeah. Yeah, mm. I was 21 at that point of time. So imagine mm -hmm. means uh, looking at those profile and just completely getting overwhelmed and uh, thinking, you know, having these self-limiting beliefs that this is not something you can do you are not capable you are not at the right education experience and everything and or i don't fit in or will i fit in with this group yeah. or not right mm -hmm. people will question me i don't fit into that mm -hmm. role or get ideal image of a coach so i mm -hmm. just abandoned it and that was a self-limiting belief i feel that if today at somebody would uh, a 21 year old would come to me and say, I want to be a coach. I would encourage that person. I mm -hmm. would say, okay, mm -hmm. if you have the right skills, you know, the right qualities go ahead. But that point of time, I said that, no, I don't think I can do this. So beyond that, uh, I looked at image consulting and I kind of found that, yes, it's in sync with what I want to do in life. Mm -hmm. And it is in sync with my strengths. And that was the beginning of, um, you know, for me to dive into the field of image consulting. Uh, this was a one year of, you know, to and fro and talking to multiple people and all of it. And that's where the next shift in my career started. And this is really interesting. And I would tell all the people who are on the fence right now and trying to switch their career. And if you are young, don't do this mistake. Hmm. So when I decided- Listen, I want listen to guys, listen carefully. <laughs> right. <laughs> yes. When I decided this is my thing, this is my aim, I dream and I want to become an image consultant um, finally. What I did, I just got so inspired and motivated that I just, you know, by looking at a few movies, watched a few movies, I just quit my job without any backup plan. Without <laughs> which movies? I'm, I'm interested now. Which which ones did you watch? <laughs> I'm not going to say that. <laughs> really? Because okay. No, the we problem is that... Um, Maybe I didn't. We won't judge you for your choice of movies there, Sonia. We won't. <laughs> All the movies would talk about, you know, pursuing your career, taking that risk and just go and do it. Mm -hmm. I just took it, uh, not diving deeper into and making a plan of action. If I go right. back to those movies right now, yeah. I see that, oh, that guy took a calculated risk. But me at that point of time just decided i'd just quit <laughs> and yeah, yeah, yeah. have no backup plan. it happens because you know what the movie was your trigger the movie was yes. your trigger your mind was already it had made some progress it had done some calculations it was already yes. exploring you know and i so yes. believe in this that um, you know as the buddhists say they have this thing in the zen philosophy when the student is ready the teacher emerges yes. right yes Yes. When the student is ready, the teacher emerges, which means now the teacher does not have to be someone in a physical form. It could right. be a book, a movie, a conversation, anything that has now sort of accelerated that 
internal journey. You were already there. It's not that all of a sudden you went to watch a movie, you came out of the movie hall and said, fine, I'm going to quit my job and change my life, right? Now, I don't, yeah. some people do that when they, it happens to some people when they do the NLP training and so many other things, a profound shift, because most of us, we don't get the time to spend with ourselves to have the sort of conversation in the first place. So you go to a conference where you're disconnected from your day-to-day -day life, you have some influential coach or speaker, some authority figure, and you come out of, you know, a vastly changed person. But I do believe that your mind was already there. I'll give you mine, my which movie, which is not like a trigger for me to quit my job, but it sustained me during very, very difficult times. There was a pursuit of happiness, Will Smith, right? <laughs> Do you know how much I love that movie? I had the I had the background score on my um, iPhone uh, back then, and I would listen to it every now and then. Really? <laughs> Virtual high five there? Okay, great. And um, I even, when I went to San Francisco, I took out, three days just to be in all the locations where Will Smith was during that time, you know, sitting on this uh, by the Harbor Bridge, the block where he was working, et cetera, et cetera, so many other places. And I, uh, because it gave me hope during a very difficult time, that entire story of that gentleman, uh, who now is also an inspirational speaker, I believe him, uh, himself, uh, the character that Will Smith plays in that movie, and very deeply inspiring. And uh, so interested about uh, what, imp which, well, maybe if you're comfortable sharing, um, you know, <laughs> What, what was the impact and how did that influence you? There were so many. In fact, there was not one because, you know, you are motivated, inspired. So you're looking for this kind of content only. So uh -huh. I'm reading it in books. I'm so she's seeing it in the movies and it's just acting. You are ha that there's this euphoria and then these things working as catalyst, as you said, yeah. that you know, it just triggers that. So, mm -hmm. um, yes, means it happened. I just quit my job and within one month I realized my mistake. So for <laughs> all the people out there, I would say that, you know, do not ever do this mistake. Take calculative risk. Don't do um, anything which would, uh, you know, you would actually regret sometime back. Yeah, don't don't um, walk out of a movie theater and just quick. <laughs> Is that what you're saying? I'm gonna do this. <laughs> okay. no, no, never recommend okay. it. Right. So I took up another job and, um, you know, plan B came into picture and I said, this time I'm going to do it right. And I funded my education Monday to Friday. I would work and Saturday, Sunday I would study. And then, yes, I saved after that education. I saved enough money, which was just for four months, 80,000 rupees at that point of time, enough to pay my four months rent and my bills, electricity and mobile and everything else. <laughs> and just four months I gave myself and I said that, you know, you have to get out of that loop because that comfort of, you know, money mm -hmm. credited in your account is just so addictive. You have to take that leap of faith Indeed. and that mm -hmm. calculative risk. So four months I gave myself and I said I have enough money. But it didn't take me four months. It took me seven to eight months. And I borrowed money from my friends and all. Right, <laughs> right. Those. That's perhaps the yeah. second takeaway there. You know, uh, your estimates will often go wrong when it comes to finances, Absolutely. right? <laughs> Absolutely. Right. Nothing works as per plan. But the mm -hmm. idea is that once you have started that journey, don't give up. Don't mm. have, I had the plan B that I right. can always go back to the job. But my plan B was never in top of my mind. It was never in my vision. It was the worst case scenario. Like I have given up. And that's when I will go back to my job. So my plan B was my worst case scenario. Uh -huh. It was not my okay scenario. Right. So finally, after seven months, I got my first client. And wow. uh, yes. breakthrough. Mm -hmm. Yes. That's when that that's the me. aha moment for every all, all us freelancers out there. Right. Your first client. Right. First client. Uh, but, you know, after the first client, there was a dip. For six months, not a single contract, not mm -hmm. a single contract. That euphoria, which was right there, I was at the peak and it went down. And I, it was I can relate to it. Definitely been there. Definitely. It's like the universe it's testing you. You know, the universe says, I'm going to give you a little trailer here, Sonia. You know, this is how it could be. This is how your life could be. I'm going to give you a little trailer, Simarji. This is how your life could be. And then I'm going to vanish for the next one year, you know. <laughs> and I'll see if you can stick around. I'll see if you have the faith to still be around, um, you know, for that next six months, eight months, right? Okay. Yes, Sonia, yes. Before, before, before you go further, if I may, before you go further, I'm, I'm really really inspired by this by the work ethic of a 21 year old or 20 year old to work uh, five days and the weekend and save money for your courses please uh, as, as you go further uh, please also talk about your work ethic um, where did it come from what drove it 
and how can young people who are listening to this conversation learn from it because we're now living in an era where there's a huge sense of entitlement right so if you've given birth to me you better look after my education that too in the top notch schools and universities of the world right it's your duty hey dad or mom you gave birth me to me and so uh, <laughs> i'm just exaggerating it a bit but you know where i'm coming from so talk to us about your work ethic please as you as you share your story sure i would and uh, this is something that is really close the story is something really close to my heart mm -hmm. um i come from a very humble background um raised by a single mother um and always uh, when she started out and she realized that she's on her own she, i was just 3 year old or something mm -hmm. okay. so that's when she was on her own and she had me and um not that much of education she comes from a very uh tier 3 uh, town of india and mm -hmm. uh, no exposure no education she was just a uh, 12th standard pass so um what she did after that was she immediately put me in boarding school mm -hmm. so that she can she uh, started studying herself first of all so that she could do wow. a job so i saw my mother working monday to friday and saturday sunday studying herself okay so that's where it is coming from so you did not need any motivational speakers no absolutely not mm -hmm. so she worked monday to friday so so that she could pay my uh, fee and then um saturday i'm getting a little emotional there nah, but saturday sunday um yeah i mean she would study and she would just make me sit next to her and we both would i would do my homework and she would study so wow. that was where i'm coming from and then um she realized that she has to really push through and do a lot of hard work so that she can give me the right education in the right institutes and everything and she ensured that i study in the best of the institutes and not the top not the top institutes so i was sent to boarding school at the age of 5 and um, yes means i studied from 5th standard till 12th standard um till 12 year old so till 6th uh, standard um in boarding school so for 6 7 years i was in boarding school and i just saw my mother only on uh, you know during vacations and all right. so the work which must have been very tough uh, as well it was it was right. but you know when you are uh, molded that ways when you mm -hmm. are like my mom would just uh, when i was 7 year old she would book my ticket and i would travel on my own all alone mm -hmm. she would just tell me when you land over there or you will uh, not land uh, train travel i'm talking mm -hmm. about <laughs> mm -hmm. flights were not <laughs> something yeah. that we could afford but yeah when you would be at the station you'll find this person and he would be wearing this this shirt and he will take you to this place so she wouldn't be there but it was immense amount of trust on these close group of people who supported my mom and me and uh, yes means i saw everyone around me just working so hard and making something out of nothing like making and uh, made, my mother made me out of nothing <laughs> so wow wow um, she did a fine yeah. job she did she did a fine job <laughs> so um, I, i think what, what um, i'll just pause here for a second to dwell on this uh, learning a little bit which is that um, it's often said that we could give the best speeches to our kids you know put up the best posters on the wall and have them watch the best movies or read the best books but of course those things are going to have their influence but what is the most important thing in shaping a young mind is the sort of influence uh, is what they see it's what's happening around them right we, we could stress about the importance of exercise and getting up early but if the parents aren't doing that they'll they'll have a very tough time convincing the kid about the advantages of this thing so um as it's quite evident in the in your personal journey personal story that you had um, your mom as your shining example of what um what to do in adversity and how to convert challenges into opportunities and turn them around and she made sure that you got all the opportunities uh, um and I'm so happy to hear that thank you for sharing and opening up sonia yeah thank you and you know when you said entitlement when she worked hard and all the things when i was rubbing shoulders with the people who are really privileged to be in mm -hmm. that same institute but yeah. i know where yeah. i'm coming from so that was a privilege for me that was something that she worked hard to give and i valued that so that's where i say that you know you should be grateful about even if something is given to you by birth also 
you should be grateful about it because it's a matter of moments that things would change or you would be in a different setting altogether and mm -hmm. that privilege will not be there with you anymore so it's important that you are grateful about these small small things and uh, that gratefulness and that you know work ethics just come from what i have seen around me and the kind of people i have been with and for all the young people out there even if you are someone living in a, a metro Mm -hmm. and you have all the exposure in the world and all the things in the world you're meeting mm -hmm. the right people you're rubbing shoulder with who's and uh, who's who's of the world mm -hmm. or you are from someone from a tier two tier three city and you just have your phone your internet with you that is also equally as important of an opportunity that somebody would have in a you know metro or a tier one city so don't think that you don't have enough everything is right there you just have to go out and reach for it so that's that's uh, something that i totally believe in and that mo get me moving always mm -hmm. which is great and um, i completely agree with that i often tell youngsters especially those who feel left behind especially those mm -hmm. who feel left out of the formal system especially who uh, there's like millions of uh, youngsters in this country in the indian subcontinent many of whom whom are our subscribers also and the number one concern for them is if i cannot speak english fluently i feel that i'm left out i'm part of a different country altogether you know there's so many opportunities that i miss out on and you spoke about self limiting beliefs earlier uh please talk to us about uh did you encounter any if yes how did you overcome them and uh, what um, strategies or tools would you share with our viewers especially our young viewers who might have um, been programmed uh, with certain self limiting beliefs right from birth you know we right. pick up so much from the environment there's these cultural memes uh, there's these parental parental limiting beliefs oh i found a new term today parental limiting beliefs plb <laughs> i've heard we've heard about slbs before self limiting beliefs i've coined a new term i love these right. interviews <laughs> parental limiting beliefs which is because yeah. uh, when the negative beliefs or limiting beliefs from one generation are carefully packaged and reinforced right. and handed on to the next generation there you go better they go out and change the world but you know keep your head down don't ask any questions no entrepreneurship only find a government job and that's one generation giving their limiting beliefs to the next one so talk yeah. to us about self limiting beliefs please uh, uh, especially yeah. for youngsters absolutely yes uh, that's my area of passion that i always keep talking about and um, i because i had the exposure of you know uh, studying in a hindi medium school in a tier 3 uh, town as well and studied in the metro altogether so i had the exposure and i saw this with my friends with my uh, schoolmates college mates that they would have the right talent they would have uh, you know great marks great in acads great in everything but the moment it comes to presenting themselves in the right possible manner and sharing that their talents that's where they start you know these self limiting beliefs kick in i will actually address the language one which is the most important self limiting belief for uh, people in india you have to go abroad and if you don't go abroad just open youtube and start looking at leaders of uh, china latin america uh, europe all these countries and major countries in the world are not where the first language is not english well okay? said the first mm -hmm. language is not english when i go to us when i have gone for my conferences and people from latin america and europe and greece and you uh, you know france and if i meet someone from asian countries and i start speaking english and they look at me with this wow that oh my god sonia you can speak you english. speak your english is so good right <laughs> they they don't sort of understand and appreciate the fact that for us is is like our um it's our second mother mother tongue right we we learn we pick up our vernacular of original languages and for the vast majority um, and then yes of course yeah mm -hmm. right so and the leaders in my industry the top masters in the world there are 20 masters in my industry all over the world mm -hmm. out of the 20 master there are only there are 12 people who speak their native country the their actual country language they wow. don't know how to speak english but they are the masters in their field so don't let this thing that you can't speak english uh you know really 
create that self-limiting belief that no you are not capable of it you can do anything nowadays you we have tools things people can translate google can absolutely. translate things absolutely for you. it's just another skill it's just another skill that you can pick up now say for example uh, the, the shift from being a keynote speaker to a virtual keynote speaker you know so for, for me being on stage to doing what i'm doing today um it required learning now i can't sit there saying oh i've done it for 13 years sorry no more learning for me you know don't you come and change my the way how i do work and i'm not going to do this it was a new skill i had to pick it up i did not demean myself in the process i did not say what a ridiculous speaker you are you know you never learned all these virtual tools before hey it's happened now i need to pick it up and as you rightly said youngsters can do the same with this language whole this whole obsession about which partly you know we have to agree to the fact that yes it does open a lot of doors and youngsters are left out of so many wonderful opportunities if they cannot speak in english or carry themselves you know etc etc right and any self limiting belief like language even one self limiting belief if you'll have that will actually um you know create and have a massive impact on all of your appearance Agreed. entire image agree so for example a lot of people who are from tier 2 cities they get a good job in the it companies and the next moment they are sent offshore for some project mm -hmm. and over there they'll actually meet an intern and suddenly these people who are project manager talking to an intern would feel a little bit insecure mm -hmm. because the intern would walk in with that you know charisma, different kind of attitude right yes. mm -hmm. and um, there will be a little bit of they they are confident in their presence whereas yep. the project manager who's the boss over here would be having that self limiting belief and mm -hmm. would forget that they are the boss over here mm -hmm. so what happens even one thought even one thought and that's where i want to come back to the programming bit that uh -huh, you know please the uh, excel the excel sheets yeah <laughs> and the uh, uh, sound that was everything that you keep and this is what nlp is all about neurolinguistic mm -hmm. programming every single thing that you tell yourself everything that you keep repeating yourself it programs in your mind it programs in your entire body and your entire body starts reacting your presence starts reacting towards that side so if you keep telling yourself you are not enough your body your body language your presence the way that you carry interact with other people will always communicate that you are not enough but if you will tell yourself yes i am enough i am work in progress i have my strengths i have my weaknesses i'm always highlighting my strength and i'm working on my weaknesses because we are human beings at the end of the day if right. you will accept that that will make you so authentic and so limitless that you will be all right your mistakes your weaknesses will be your own you will own it up very proudly and you'll say yes that's my weakness but i'm working on it i'm not saying that i just shrug it away but look at my bright side look at my strengths i can do this 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 and when you keep telling yourself on an ongoing basis that's something that just programs your mind in a totally different direction that's where you are programmed to limitlessness so i, I, I definitely i love that concept um, and i've spoken about it and i so agree with it you know if you look at yourself as a wip you know my name is simajit singh i'm a work in progress right i'm not perfect <laughs> don't judge me on that criteria nice to meet you <laughs> a virtual handshake <laughs> yeah and um so you suddenly become a lot more comfortable when you when you are not trying to be perfect and when you are um perhaps aware and also you acknowledge your weaknesses as well you're aware of them and um but you're not you're not judging yourself on them alone you're not being too harsh on yourself and um, uh, the the same concept sonia is reflected in um, the book about growth mindset uh, professor Car carol dweck she talks about the growth minded people or growth minded leaders they're not afraid to experiment they're not afraid to mm -hmm. be embarrassed they don't take embarrassments personally somehow i feel with this whole language issue and the self limiting beliefs coming from a tier 2 city tier 3 city and i've lived through it i grew up in a very small town in the border area of punjab uh, in district gurdaspur it's called batala that's where i spent all the way up till 10 plus 2 then i moved to chandigarh which was a little cultural jump for me from batala to chandigarh and then from chandigarh 3 years to cause then so i had all the kids from you know from my own city in my in up until 10 plus 2 and then in chandigarh we had kids all across the country who came in 
to study. So there was there was this little jump, and then from uh, IHM Chandigarh in 1999 to study hospitality in this Sydney Hotel School. In uh, all of a sudden, right when the Olympics were about to happen, so then again, uh, Sydney, as you know, is a very multicultural place. It was very happening. It, it is still very happening. Was very happening back then when we had the Olympics in. So another huge jump. But as you rightly said, you gotta upgrade that software every now and then and spend time with yourself. Find out, you know, am I underesting underestimating myself? Right. What is this person? Uh, who, who, this person I've put on a pedestal. Right. Why? Is it because the color of their skin or the language or the race or their ethnicity or what, right? So we need to counter those self-limiting beliefs. We need to ask empowering questions and that's when things begin to change. And I, you so rightly said uh, when it comes to these youngsters feeling having this inferiority complex, um, they just got to question themselves, you know. It's, is it a language I'm measuring my worth on? Yes. Or is it my ideas and my ability to achieve something? Absolutely. Once you so shift well. that focus, you, you will feel uh, like a different person. Talk to us about the imposter syndrome, Sonia. It's a huge <laughs> thing for, you know, folks at all levels suffer from it. You know, they walk into a right. new situation, a speaker, a coach, an influencer, so many others. We feel, ah, maybe, you know, I'm just, uh, somebody's going to find out I'm an imposter, right? And <laughs> that's a huge, huge reason why people suffer the lack right. of self-esteem at times. Yeah. How right. would you recommend people to, you know, counter that? Right. Um, see, imposter syndrome um, is something I actually say everything that exists, if you do it in the right manner, it is good to have. All right. Because if uh, copying someone or following somebody's footstep, like somebody gets inspired by you, Simaji, then would want to just replicate the same method. Maybe that's an inspiration. You are an inspiration to that person. But then it is something that could act as a catalyst, but they slowly need to move on and find out their authentic self, who they, who they are, are. Right. who they are as a person, as I kept um, said earlier also, what's my strengths what is mm -hmm. something that i am great at doing mm -hmm. and um, we know about the nine types of intelligences right so there are different you don't have to do the same thing same formula and repeat otherwise you will be people will figure out that you are an imposter after a point of time but if you take that imposter syndrome to just kickstart if you it if it keeps you in that cocoon and give you that you know a uh, safe house that okay i can start with this by looking like this person but slowly you need to find that one particular area that is your skill set where you can dive into and you can take it completely into a different direction so a little bit of it is something that is maybe okay for people if they can't get out of their shell they can find another shell to feel safe by pretending to be somebody else, but not for a long time. Because if you'll keep doing that, you will, you know, people may start calling you the other person's image. <laughs> it's right. not random, it's not <clears throat> random. <laughs> <laughs> well, we get it all the time in the YouTube comment section. We, we get it all the time. We get it. Uh, Sir, mm -hmm. how can I be like you? I, and I would you counter do. it. I would counter it by asking them, why would you want to be like me? You know, mm -hmm. maybe maybe there's things about me that you like and you appreciate, and I'm so very thankful for that. Mm -hmm. uh, but you should be you because God has sent you to be you. You should discover what is all hidden inside you. I wasn't like this maybe 10 years ago or five years ago or a year ago. I'm evolving. I'm growing. I'm creating a new version of myself every now and then. So okay. if, if it's not like uh, Simarjeet Singh arrived on planet Earth, you know, sure about himself and confident and all other things, right? And uh, uh, you grow. And um, I think this is what every individual should be doing as well, is to find out the resources for their inner growth also and to discover mm -hmm. what is programmed within them you know my daughters yeah. were surprised the other day sonia when we we had this little wheatgrass um, tray we ordered or with put some organic wheat on it and using hydroponics putting some water in to grow some wheatgrass in the kitchen and to make create right. some wheatgrass shorts it's very very good by the way uh, yeah. and um, so they're like dad this this whole thing is coming out of this as the wheatgrass was growing it, it came out out of out of that seed i said yes dear and if you leave it, if you put it in soil and if you leave it long enough and if you give it the right circumstances, it will create more seeds, more wheat right. and you right. can harvest it many number of times. Really, she was like dumbfounded by this whole concept. How can one tiny seed have all of this uh, programmed in it? And look at this. That's how we all are. We are 
we come with limitless, boundless potential. And if we yes. give ourselves the right environment, uh, who knows what is in store for you. So don't copy someone, as Sonia rightly said. Um, maybe, you know, you take a little bit of inspiration from here, there, and then ultimately make it your own so you, um, uh, so you are you, authentically you. Why be a poor copy uh, when you can be a very expensive original? <laughs> right. Thank you, and, thank you, um, Sonia. Mm -hmm. And on that note, I actually tell people the, you know, the concept of image. Let me just talk about that also Please. a little bit. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because um, when we talk about image, it's not just what you look like. That's where the seed actually, you talked about the seed and that's where the thought came. That image, when you finally talk about the word of it, it comes out of the three things that you have in you, right? Those three things are three so yeah one two three <laughs> <laughs> works okay, that works this and this. So, all right so the three yeah. things number one is your core your core is basically who you are as a person your personality your nature uh your upbringing your nurture what people have instilled your family your education has instilled the values in you that's your core the second thing is your skill your education your work experience and everything else that you over the period of time um you know accumulate and the third thing, yeah, the third thing is basically the softer aspect of you, where how you present yourself, how you talk to people, how you make them feel, how you take your inner package and, um, you know, like present it out to the world. So these three things, these three combination, if you look at it, it is completely unique. When you make this combination, it's so different from one person to another. The imposter syndrome actually comes in that when we are comparing my skill with another skill, I'm an MBA, this person is an MBA. I also have this education. This person has this education. Okay, I can be like him but or her. But what about the core and the softer aspect of it? Because when you look at those two elements also, it just goes beyond. You suddenly realize you are not that person anymore. So the important thing is to look at these three things all together, your core, your skills, as well as the how do you package that and present it to the world. That you will give you the right mm -hmm. you know, package, the right thing, who you are as a person, that will answer your question. So your core is who you are, your skills, right. what you can Skill. do, and how right. you package and present it is the exterior, uh, exterior. You know, all these things that we keep talking about, body language, communication skills, etc., mm -hmm. etc., et all of these things, right? I'm actually looking for, uh, I don't have it, I should actually, uh, should have carried it. But yes, um, all the viewers, um, and you also must have seen this pencil, Apsara Extra Dark. Uh-huh, yes, I have. Right? And if you read the label, it says, Apsara Extra Dark for Extra Dark Handwriting. Mm -hmm. Correct. Okay. Yeah, right? I haven't read that. No. <laughs> <laughs> but it says extra dark, right? Do you know right. that upside extra dark pencil? Let's it let's does. just keep it to that. Mm -hmm. And then if you read in the fine italics, it says for extra dark handwriting. Although it already says upside extra dark. Now you know when you have to go and buy a pencil which needs to write dark, you will by default upside will be the name that will come in your mind. Correct. Uh, right. Because of the branding. Mm -hmm. Still. Still, till today, Apsara writes it on the packaging, Apsara Extra Dark for Extra Dark Handwriting. Mm -hmm. Why? It's basically, I'm taking a pen over here, but if I have to talk about, it's mm -hmm. basically a fine balance of your value, which is your lead on the inside, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. right? If I have to talk about a pen pencil, yeah. and the valuables, which is on your outer, uh -huh. right. right? If you take the pencil, the value is only in the lead. Can I write with the pencil or not? Mm -hmm. If the pencil doesn't have a lead, it's of no use to me, right? So Agreed. your value is your skill, your core, your personality, your, you know, uh, what you have learned over the period of time, education, experience, everything is your value. Mm -hmm. And how you package it on the outer side, you have to put this value on your packaging on the outer side, which says Apsara Extra Dark. That's when people pick up, that's where people see that that's where they give you the opportunity. That's how you create a brand for yourself. Mm. So a fine balance of your great brand. example there. I loved it. Thank you. And I think it's it's so uh, the, the, this whole example made it very clear to you that the core who you are, your skills, what you can do, how you can add value and the, how you present and package it. And all three of them have their own importance. And, you know, yet as we come across so many cases when people are really good at the core, but then they miss out. They're really horrible at step number three, how they present it or how the world perceives it. They miss out on that and they're often misunderstood. They're really good people, really good people. I personally know some of them, honest, sincere, 
but they are misunderstood all the time and they've spent a big chunk of their time clearing these misunderstandings because as you rightly said they have not paid attention to how other people are perceiving them what is that they're projecting um, right. to the world outside so thank you very much for sharing that it's been a wonderful conversation here today sonia i so appreciate uh, you taking out your time and you have this um, uh, infectious uh, positive energy and i've been thoroughly enjoying our talk um, and before we let you go um, t would you please share some um, success tips for our young professionals and young students who are preparing for an unknown new normal but we don't know how things are going to be is it going to be hybrid are they when is the economy going to bounce back what should the students and young professionals who are listening to this whether it's on linkedin or whether on youtube what is your message to them sonia absolutely so um few steps i actually don't have steps i would just maybe give it in a very simple format and that comes back to even the quote that i keep saying that things will never I means today it is this a uh, few years ago when i started out there was recession uh, something else will pop up some other point of time there will be something or the other or your personal challenges also will keep coming if it's not a global challenge it will be a personal challenge so be prepared for everything and how do you do that first of all remember success is not an event okay it's not going to happen as you said some uh, some time back that you did, didn't just arrive on planet earth and emerge out of nowhere it is you are still as you said that you're still work in progress you were not here five years ago so don't take success as that one fine day this will happen no it's these small small steps that you will have to take to reach that success so it's the small mini events that will reach to the level of which you will call ultimately a success now what do you have to do to <laughs> thank you for that <laughs> yeah. yes. so we have to talk have about to... we have to talk about your how did you get the excel sounds also out of your mind before before we ah, say bye yes, so, yeah. <laughs> yes i will do that yes right. and i also have to talk about that you know that how i converted that excel sound to something that led me to um, you know continue with my business and kickstart and you know channelize that to fantastic. a different direction altogether fantastic so Many steps, what you have uh -huh. to do is, first of all, take care of your internal, what we started with, worship your body as your temple. Your, and mm -hmm. body, when I say it's not body and mind, this body has your mind inside it, right? Absolutely. So worship this whole thing, your physical self as your temple. It starts from your physical self. Program yourself on that ways that you are every day doing that morning ritual and, you know, figuring out your 24 hours. Start with 24 hours, bite size. Uh, mini events right that you can actually eat and chew and enjoy it and not something so massive that you can't eat it and finish it mm -hmm. so that's how you have to start so first of all internal sort that out then think and sit down with what are the skills that i have what is the kind of intelligences i have do is my talent lying in my body do i ha do am i good looking well utilize that am i intelligent I, am i intellectual am i very good with interpersonal skills uh, do i have creative abilities am i really good with music with art with dance mm -hmm. um anything different kind of intelligences are there tap on that pick that one thing and just repeat 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 and repeat consistency is the key resilience and consistency these are the only two things if you'll keep repeating that if you'll keep doing it on an ongoing basis you will ultimately will become an expert a master or you know you will reach what your idea of success right. is right but the idea is to find that one idea and keep mm -hmm. repeating it on a consistent basis do not back down do not let anything else those dips actually make you look away here and there no just keep doing that resilience and consistency resilience so that's and consistency my steps to success <laughs> that's great that's great sonia i love the idea of consistency and resilience because and and also uh, taking it in small steps because um, sometimes people set these really huge transformational goals and because they cannot see any progress, they give up on them altogether. So rightly said, learn to train your mind. You also talked about discovering your strengths, nurturing them, find out what are you cut out for, experiment with it if you have to, right? You might not find the answer in a single day, but uh, if you have to experiment, uh, if you have to experiment, do that with different things and then figure out what works for me, what felt most natural. And um, slowly you will arrive at that sort of the, the golden place in between the intersection, which the Japanese call the Ikigai. They discovering your Ikigai, discovering your purpose. Great. So 
time to say goodbye but before that you had uh, these troublesome sounds excel sheet sounds uh, which bothered you around and you were like thinking about them in your first job how did you because because th th this is really important people have this people go onto a stage and they have this sound of perhaps a friend who used to bully them in school or some some other sibling who used to tell the person you're stupid you won't ever do anything in life and that sound overpowers them once again um, yeah and you you did ask me to remind you before we say goodbye to share your experience about that talk to us about that please Sure. So um, it was just Excel sheet, which I could see. And it was just, oh, you will be just doing the same thing over and over again. And that taking that leap of faith and finally starting my career in image consulting. But then again, there were a lot of people who suddenly, when you try to do something new, there will be so many people will uh, come and say things to you. So after the Excel sheet, what happened, there were people who were saying, you had such a fine career. People don't have jobs. You are being stupid. Stupid was the word. So after ah. Excel sheet, it got replaced to stupid. Mm -hmm. You're spoiling your CV. You're spoiling your, uh, you know, your profile and getting into something else which people don't even know about. Know about. And then, yeah. So first it was Excel sheet. Now it was being stupid and destroying my career. Mm -hmm. And then it was just every single time it was so tough to just bring your thoughts together and that is where you have to as i said worship your body and your mind as one invest in yourself have that thing keep telling yourself that no so i had not given myself a choice i was not telling myself i will try to become an image consultant i will try to be india's first certified image professional that was not try there was no try for me like as i gotta do it a Wars fan <laughs> do or do not there's no try master yoda Absolutely. says so. <laughs> yeah that's right <laughs> there was no try for me it was i will become image consultant i will become india's first certified image professional i will start india's first accredited image consulting institute i will start in india's first you know everything all the things that i have accomplished so every single thing i had to keep telling myself to replace that stupid being dumb taking the wrong decision who does that at such a early start of their career and everything to something which i had told myself that no there is no choice you have mm -hmm. to do this this is There's no looking back yeah yes and replacing you have to immediately replace that thought before it lingers on you and it's like you know like it's like an infection which will go all over your body so you have to just Catch it at the first go. The moment somebody calls you stupid, remind yourself, tell your brain. It's training your brain. Remind yourself that, no, I am enough. I am capable of doing things. I know what I'm doing. Yes. So it's constantly just replacing that thought and telling yourself, no, I'm on the right path. I know what I'm doing. Maybe if that message comes consistently, you have to relook. Don't be absolutely blindfolded that, no, I am... <laughs> No. Right. <laughs> if, you, if you're constantly planet, hearing it all the time you better pay some attention all right on the lighter yes. note right yeah. <laughs> hmm. but still if your gut feeling says that no this is my path just go for it or, or perhaps it. no this person cannot see what i can see right or he or she does not have the vision the sort of imagination to this is my imagination i can see myself in this new avatar you know 10 years from now and perhaps with all due respect my loving friend here does not have the imaginative faculties to look that far ahead into the future or see things the way I'm able to see. So I don't hate my friend then. I don't, no disrespect, no hard feelings. But hey, you cannot see what I can see. And what I can see is, is my gift. It's come to me from somewhere trusting that I can convert that idea into life. So no wonder these ideas came to you because you, you, somewhere within you, as you spoke about it already in your corporate career, you had within you that I can convert these ideas into life, right? So that's beautifully said. You, you got to take charge. You got to take charge of your internal conversations. And if you hear stupid, stupid from the outside, it reminds me of these lines uh, in Urdu. Uh, again, once, jab jab kisi pe jag hasa hai, tab tab usne itihas racha hai. Jab jab kisi pe jag hasa hai, tab tab usne itihas raha, racha hai. And look at Elon Musk, for example. 
just just recently yes. did you i was just such an awe inspiring story with this uh, uh, space uh, new star starship that they have in place to take humanity to mars and um, you know he he was he's been through so much and multiple failures trying to get these rockets land vertically again and now every success that they have is one step closer to mars and when he first talked about it 10 12 years ago it was like ha oh, human beings on mars you know it was far fetched we have you know so we we need these individuals who uh, who take charge of their internal dialogue so that they're able to push the boundaries um so to speak Sonia, yes. we've had a wonderful interaction here today. I thank you so very much. Um, I give you a virtual high five, and I say thank you for joining this conversation, guys. If you want to, uh, please feel free to connect with Sonia Dubey Divan on her LinkedIn profile and uh, also on her website, official website, which we will share in the comment section as well as the description of this video for any queries regarding consulting or coaching or inviting her for keynote speeches, etc. And once again, thank you for joining us. We uh, a bit goodbye with another round of applause for you for being so open, so authentic. Um, thoroughly enjoyed this conversation, Sonia. Bye Thank bye you now. so much, Ravi, for having me. Thank you. Bye bye. Take care. Bye.